Hello, bug bounty hunters. Welcome back to Ditesol Affiliate. So today I'll be introducing to you one former by Bactera Edge. One former is a is a crowdsourcing platform just like Clickworker, Crowd Quadrant, or maybe Appen, just to name but a few. So make sure you stay tuned because I'll be doing an introduction of all these platforms on our channel. But today we want to focus with one former. So one former just like Clickworker, it has UHRS and there's money to be made there. Just note that some of the projects that appear on Clickworker UHRS will not be the same as the tasks that appear on one former UHRS. Sometimes you get that one former has more tasks than Clickworker, or maybe Crowd Quadrant has better tasks than one former. So it's good for you to have all the accounts, even though they supposedly say that you're not supposed to have accounts with every other provider, I suggest that you have all of them with you because sometimes you will get that the projects being displayed on the UHRS platform for each vendor will be different. What I would advise you before doing so is just make sure that you have separate browsers for each and every vendor and at least try to use a different email address when signing up. The payment email address can be the same PayPal or maybe the same Pioneer account but the email that you use to sign up with you can try to change it a little bit and try to use different browsers. That way you won't mix up both your one former judge ID with Clickworker judge ID or maybe Crowd Quadrant judge ID. So Without further ado, let's go ahead and sign up and just remember that I'll leave a link in the description below for you to sign up. So you really don't need to start Google searching one former because the link will be right below the description. So we go ahead and click on sign up. It's going to land you to such a page. So here is where you fill your personal details. So you will have to fill your first name and last name. I'm going to do this really quickly. Your username, this should be your public name in the community. So you really should choose something that's unique because this will be used to identify you on one former community. So I'm going to choose this. I'm going to type in my email address. So make sure this is a working email address because they send you emails regarding updates and maybe just right after completing the registration process right now they will send you a link to activate your account so it needs to be an email that is accessible so here's the password section so for the password section you need to choose a strong password and for you to choose a strong password you need a combination of numbers special characters and a mixture of both uppercase and lowercase letters i'm going to do that right now after you've input your password you need to repeat the password down there and i advise you not to just copy and paste it's not advisable so you just come and type it in so that if you make a mistake and the password fields do not match or maybe you input something that you're not sure of it will tell you down here so i'm going to go ahead and put that password in so your country of residence you just need to choose your country of residence down here for this demonstration i'm going to use kenya as an example so for the city of residence you can decide to allow the platform to detect your current location by clicking here and then it's going to ask you to allow one former to know your location that's one option or you can just come here and type in your location the city nairobi area so for the native languages you need to select a maximum of three languages. I suggest that you select all the three. Don't select two or one. So I'm going to say English, English UK, English Kenya first, English United Kingdom, and maybe English United States. This is an optional field because it doesn't have an hysteric. See, every other field has an hysteric, but this one is an optional field. So how did you hear about one former? You just select and maybe say there's no YouTube here, but you can just select anything or you can even select this and, and, and I'm going to say Facebook. 
So you have to check all these three boxes after you filled your information. So the first one is a checkbox for terms of use. So you, in case you want to see the terms of use, you just click on the link there. And then it will display to you the terms and conditions for registration in one former as an independent contractor or a freelance vendor. So I'm going to accept this. And when you have clicked on that tick, it will redirect you here. So you need to scroll all the way down when you're all the way down you need to input your signature here you need to sign here you can just hover your mouse by left clicking and dragging the mouse to the shape that your signature is in then sign and accept you will need to sign and agree to the non-disclosure agreement for using one former as well it will display for you the non-disclosure agreement you need to scroll all the way down but you really need to study this and hover your mouse by left clicking and dragging you left click hold and drag so that you can sign here and then sign and accept you need to tick this checkbox too to agree that you've read the privacy policy the gdpr clause and the cookies policy for using on former pages after all that is done you need to check this checkbox to confirm that you are human so it will bring you up a capture you need to select an image containing a cat with a long hair so there are many types of cats here but you can see this one has long hair this one too has long hair and this one and maybe this one then verify after the capture verification is done you need to click on yes please i want to join the one former community right here so i'll click on it we have finished the sign up process and you can see they tell you that there's one more step they tell you that thanks for registering and you need to check your email to confirm your email. so you need to log into your email this is my demonstration email address folder and you can see there's an email from one former it's saying welcome to one former so I'm going to scroll up to the point where there is the activate my one former account in green. So I'll click on it. It will check if the connection is secure and maybe redirect you. So as you can see, your account has been successfully activated. So after confirming the registration, you will come and log in into one former. You will put the email that you signed up with and the password. We would like to share with you news about our work. Well, I'm going to choose no thanks today. So there will be this pop-up up here. So this pop-up will give you your next steps on OneFormer. So we're going to go step by step. They say, welcome to OneFormer. Thank you for joining our community. This brief tour guide will give you some basic tips on how to explore the site. So you can click on next step. Find the perfect opportunity. It's all to click on job section, the navigation bar to explore our job opportunities. Next step. So some jobs require certification to demonstrate you have the right skill sets. Also, you can go to the certification section in the navigation bar now to check available tests. So next step, you can level up in the community. The more active you are on projects and community, the higher your level and more badges you can collect you can check your level anytime on my profile section on the navigation bar so i'm gonna click on ready to start so this is the home page one former once you log in as you can see this is their logo right about here that's the one former logo and just next to it you can see there is a home page design they had an old home page design it looked like this if you shift so this is how it looked like but now they have a new home page design we're going to switch over to the new one so this tab here if you click on it it will show you the jobs or work opportunities that are available we have data collection tasks transcription tasks judging and grading so our uhrs usually falls under judging and grading but then we are not there yet. So first of all, before we get to the UHRS part, there are some certifications and some surveys you need to complete. So if you click 
on the survey section on certifications, you will see that there are very many certifications available. And you can choose to view all of them by clicking on all. We're going to do a few tests here. So you're required to do three tests here. So you're required to do the UK language test. You see the UK language test is right here. If you look at the details, the certification type is a language test and there are three attempts remaining and each attempt has 30 questions. So you need to do the UK language test and you need to do also the US language test. I'm just gonna do a quick search for it. So right before the test guys, you need to complete your profile. So you go to my profile. So under your profile, you will see your username listed here. This one you cannot change. Your contract ID too will be listed there. That one too you cannot change. Your first name and last name will be listed. You have to complete the profile by giving your year of birth. So I'm gonna put my year of birth. So my year of birth and gender. I'm going to choose a gender for our demonstration. Nationality, I'm going to put Kenyan, since it's very difficult. Okay. Country of residence, you can't change that because you already chose it when you were registering. And once you have input maybe your year of birth, you need to click on update. It won't load or do anything, but for sure it will update. Just make sure you click on the update button once you've filled it and it will automatically update itself. Let's go ahead and fill our contact information. So here, you can choose to fill every other information that's listed. But for our demonstration purpose, I'm only going to fill the fields that have an hysteric. For example, the primary email has an hysteric and it's already there, so you can't even think of changing it. It's the email that you give when you are registering. So for the phone number, it's required. I'll choose the country as Kenya and input the phone number for this demonstration. So after you fill your phone number, you need to enter the capture before you can update. So the capture here is the numbers that have been written here. Then click on update. So there will be a pop-up here for data protection. So if you agree with the above, please select yes. Otherwise select no. So I'm going to select yes. Make sure you've read it and understood it. So it's telling you to make sure you've enabled WhatsApp number before sending OTP. You need to have enabled your WhatsApp number before sending one time password. So after clicking on OK, it's going to tell you that your one-time password has been sent to your WhatsApp number. Please enter within the next 10 minutes. So I'm going to check my OTP. I'm just not sure why they changed this to our WhatsApp number. Previously, they used to send it to your text message, but it's OK. We've got the OTP, so I'm going to submit. So my primary phone number is verified. I'll click on OK. So the phone number cannot be changed. You will have to contact one former if you need to change it. For the rest of the fields, I'll just leave them blank. I'll go on to languages. So on languages, you will see the number of languages that you selected during registration. We selected three languages, English, Kenya, United Kingdom, and the US. So for Kenya and the US English, they cannot be verified. But for the UK English, you can verify. And the verification can be done by going to certification and doing the certification exam. If we click on verify now, it's going to redirect you to certification for the UK language test. So you really have to complete this language test before you can get certified for UK English. So for the spoken languages, you can add at least a number of languages that you can speak. So I'll just type in English and maybe choose South Africa. 
I'll choose fluent. Maybe I'll add another English language. Let's say from uh, Tanzania. Maybe fluent. They don't have to be many really. These are the only languages that really matter. They are the ones that get you a job. So the spoken ones do not matter that much. So the spoken languages are not really necessary for you to activate your HRS, but the United Kingdom English is necessary for you to activate your HRS. Either English US or English UK. You can even import translation languages that you are able to translate to, or maybe from, let's say from South African English to English UK. You can see the proficiency is fluent. And yeah, so these ones are not really necessary for UHRS activation. So I'm not gonna focus on them that much. When you finished setting up your languages, you go to the trophy room. So this is where you will get to see your project badges. For example, if you start tasking, you will be earning badges for every level that you get to. And right now we are at level zero. We have zero badges. To become a certified one former, you need to get one certification other than welcome to one former. So guys, I'll show you about certifications. There are a couple of certifications you need to take before your account is activated. So guys, these are the certifications that you need. See the ones down here? These are the certifications you need before your account for UHRS is activated. So you will need the English reading comprehension and you will need the welcome to one former test. And you will also need the English UK test. So you need to add the English English UK test to the list. You can become a senior certified one former if you get at least five certifications to unlock this achievement. So you can even become a master of certifications. There are many. So make sure you go through the certifications that I've guided you to. So when you go to the skills, you don't need to input anything here for your HRS activation, but recently, they have introduced a requirement that you need to have a CV or maybe a curriculum vitae before your UHRS one former account is activated. So you need to upload your CV here. You just need to come and choose a file, maybe in the PDF format or maybe a Word document or a picture, JPG. So you just click on choose file and choose it from wherever you've saved it. Moving on to the work experience, so this section will automatically display the work experience that you've gained on any project for one former. Since we have not gained any single experience, there will be none here. So you don't need to fill anything here. On my devices and software, you don't need to fill anything here too for UHRS activation. And so let's go to the My Identities tab. So under the My Identities tab, is where you need to be careful. Remember, we signed up for one former, right? So, under my identities, once you have provided a Microsoft account for your live ID, you will be given a UHRS judge ID. So what this means is you have to sign up for a new Outlook account. Do not use the ones that you own. Please do not use any of your old emails. You need to sign up for a new Microsoft account here. And this one will be your live ID for UHRS in one format. So I'm going to do that quickly. I'm going to go to Outlook and create a free account. I'm going to create a password for the account. I'm going to insert first name and last name. I'm going to select my country and I'm going to key in my date of birth. I'm going to solve this puzzle to confirm I'm not a robot. So I'll choose the bear. Sometimes these capture images are too hard to solve. At least today they didn't bring a hard one. And boom, there you go. Here is our email address, our new email address. This is the email address we're going to use as our live ID. So we will go back to one former. 
come and type in that email here. Once you've typed in the email, you just click on update and then it will pop up here and say that your identity has been updated. You click on OK. So for this judge ID, it doesn't come automatically right away. For one former, you have to wait until they review your account. But then there is an easier way that you can get your account reviewed even faster. And for that, you will go to the FAQ section. I'll just open it in a new tab. So on the FAQ section, you will just come here to your JRS FAQs. I'm sorry, I keep on seeing this hit assistant bringing notifications for the eight apps that I should task on. I'm going to clear that. So scroll down up to the UHRS FAQs and then you will see here, you will need to click on this option. So you will need to click on this option that you created your new UHRS account and you're receiving an error because without the judge ID, you will obviously receive an error. So when you click here, such a page will appear. And then if you received an unauthorized error while trying to log into UHRS, please send your new hrs account information too so what you will do you'll just go and create a new email and send so let's go ahead and create the new email so you will come and compose an email and you will need to send it to so i'm gonna copy this email dgs just copy i'm going to send a new email to the dgs the subject will be uhrs account activation and here i'll just come and say hello please activate my uhrs live id my uhrs account then you come and put details such as live id the one that you've created so you will input your uh, live id here after that is done you just come and click send but before you send guys before you send you will need to make sure that you've completed your profile first so we're going to go ahead and complete the profile i just wanted to show you how you will send the email to uhrs one former so that your live id can be activated so we will go back to our profile and fill in the payment information so on the payment information nowadays they need you to link a pioneer account so if you need your uhrs account to be activated paypal may not work they might need you to have a Pioneer account. If you already have a Pioneer account, you will just link with one former right about here. And if you don't have a Pioneer account, you can either sign up here or you can watch the video that pops up above here and get to know about Pioneer registration. It's a Ditosol affiliate video too, so it's going to explain to you everything. We have an affiliate link there. You can click and sign up for Pioneer and I'm going to attach a link in the description below for signing up for Pioneer too. Since we already have a Pioneer account, so I'm going to go ahead and link my Pioneer account with one former. It's going to redirect me to a new page where I can sign in to connect Bactera Edge to my Pioneer account. So I'm going to input my login details. And once you've logged in, it will tell you that you've added a new funding source to your Pioneer account and you may now receive payments from Pactera Edge to your USD balance. To view a full list of available funding sources, log in to your Pioneer account. So we've linked our Pioneer with OneForma and when you come back to OneForma and maybe refresh, you will now see that our Pioneer account is active. So once you've started getting payments, you will view your payment history down right about below the payment information. But since we have zero entries on the payment history, there will be no data available to show. Sometimes they could even send invoices for your work. This is where you will find them. And maybe if you want to change the security of your account, maybe you want to change your password this is the section where you can change it or maybe if you want to enable multi-factor authentication so multi-factor authentication is whereby you get to enable your smartphone or tablet as the authenticator device so you just follow these simple steps when you're done you will connect to your authenticator app 
and secure your own former account on the privacy center it's the same but then there's a section that's been added for important documents so there's the terms of uses if you need to review them there's the privacy policy there's the nda the cookies policy and the gdpr clause you can even choose to download your stored account information in an xlsx format and you can view this in any microsoft excel or any spreadsheet editor that you have and if you feel like deleting your account you just click on this button here and your account will be deleted but you don't need to delete your account really so one former has a section where you can invite your friends to so you, if you invite your friends you can get bonuses and perks related to one former bonus policies so this is your referral url you just copy this and share it with whoever you want to join one former we have our referral url in the description below if you feel like promoting us and making us get the bonus for showing you such a cool video on how to register for one former please sign up using the link below we will be grateful for your effort so once you've completed the certifications needed and i'll repeat this so guys once you've completed the english reading comprehension certification and the welcome to one former certification and the english uk test you will find it on the all section if you just come and search for uk so this is the uk language test you need to take these three tests you need to take three these three tests before your uhrs can be activated once you've taken the three tests you will just come on jobs and click on judging and grading you can see there's uhrs mode atlantis atlantis so you'll just click on uhrs and you see they, they see that they are looking for native speakers of a variety of languages to work on some audio evaluation tasks what you need for the languages it's uk english tests so you see it's the one with the green so you will really need this or if you have either of these you can choose to go on and use them but the uk is the main one so i'm just going to click on this arrow right here it's going to redirect me to a new tab on this new tab we see the details for UHRS. So this is the date that the job was published. And nowadays, as I told you guys, a curriculum is needed to apply for this job. So you need a CV. So you will need a, to upload a curriculum vitae on your profile. And this job is available until 2023 on the 28th of February. And you need an English UK language to comp to apply for this job for the rate don't mind the rate it's flexible they just write some value here but it's flexible sometimes you'll get projects that pay you up to even half a dollar maybe a dollar plus and there are many so you don't need to worry about this rate and depending on your country this rate fluctuates and there are currently 51 openings and the required certifications are that you need to do the welcome to one format test just as i told you guys so this is a brief description of what they are looking for once you've satisfied these needs you've done the welcome to one format test and the uk language test and uploaded a curriculum vitae you just come and apply now well since we've not done any of the tests we've been told that a curriculum is needed to apply for this job and that can be done under your profile on the skills section just as i showed you guys to recap that i'll just go back to one former and show you under my profile on the skills and education is where you get to upload your curriculum vitae after you have applied for your hrs go back to the email that we were to send to dgs and send it after you've sent the email maybe one day later or maybe two days depending on the backlog of the request they have so after you've sent the email you'll just come on 
my identities and check here every time to see whether they have given you a UHRS judge ID. If they have, know that your UHRS account is active and you can go on and log into your UHRS using your live ID that you input down here. That's it guys. I hope it was helpful. Stay tuned and have a fantastic week ahead. Thank you for your time. Go make that money. Though.